Welcome to episode 16 of Cyberbytes the podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Cooper, co-founder of Aspiron Search. This week's guest, we have Michael Monkluglu, CEO and co-founder of Cardinal Ops. Michael is a serial entrepreneur and former Israeli Unit 8200 veteran. Having successfully exited Light Cyber to Palo Alto Networks in 2017, he and co-founder Yay Manur decided to go for it again and launched Cardinal Ops. Here's the story so far. How are you, mate? Great, how are you? I'm hoping I got the pronunciation of your surname correctly. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty good. <laughs> not a bad effort. Not an easy one. No, for sure. How you been? What you been up to? Uh, great. I'm uh, here. I'm uh, here based in Tel Aviv. We have uh, uh, great weather uh, and things are looking good. Good, good, good. Same in the UK, actually. It's been, uh, I'd like to say, a bit of a heat wave the last few days, but... Uh, all good. I'm looking forward to being out in Tel Aviv next month, but I hear it'll be pretty hot at the end of June for Cyber Week. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People are expected to be here for uh, for Cyber Week. Uh, we have a couple of these events per year and uh, gets pretty busy in, in the area for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Michael, uh, with all my guests, what I've been doing, I've been taking it right back to, to where it all started for you and how you got into security and then we'll get onto your journey to now. Yeah, sure. Sound good. So, talk to me. Where did it all begin? University or? Um, actually, like uh, many uh, Israeli uh, entrepreneurs, uh, it started uh, back in the time in the military. Uh, I served in the Israeli intelligence, where I was first exposed to the world of uh, cybersecurity, um, and uh, that was kind of the the core, uh, kind of the roots uh, of, of my uh, kind of experience. I then uh, founded. Um, my first cyber startup uh, in 2011, uh, and that really brought me from uh, the world of more uh, nation state to the world to the industry, and and uh, and exposed to that and learning about everything done there. And, uh, so that was kind of in a nutshell my journey into yeah, yeah. security. Was so when you was in because obviously military service in Israel it's compulsory, right? So at a minimum you have to do like a year. Is that right? Oh, m- much more. Uh, so oh, really? Three, Three years really? mandatory, and I actually uh, did six. Uh, so I stayed there. I was kind of had opportunities to continue and grow personally, uh, command teams, uh, you know, grow and expand uh, personally, which was an amazing experience for me. Um, I used to say that, um, you know, agreeing up front to, to sign an additional year and a half, so it's a total of four and a half years uh, before even knowing where I'm going to, was one of the uh, least uh, rational and best decisions I've ever made. I was yeah. just so the people uh, that interviewed me to the role that I decided to kind of make the jump, uh, leap of faith. And um, uh, I served with super talented people, learned so much from them, and even decided to do an additional year and a half, so a total of six. And, and so you was, it was the 8200 unit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah nice. Okay, cool. For those that don't know, who that unit are can you sort of briefly just explain that in sort of 30 seconds uh it's um the equivalent of of uh, the nsa and mi6 uh, units uh, out there so basically everything about um collecting intelligence from digital sources uh so that those are very all, all three units are very well known in the world they're leveraging a lot of technology and and in israel since uh it's mandatory so you basically have so many people uh, that are um, kind of recruited to these units, getting a lot of experience. Uh, um, I think the culture that they've built there is that you know, everything's possible. You just need to put your mind and effort to it to solve hard problems. And, uh, and that in combination with uh, the cybersecurity and entrepreneurship ecosystem in Israel is is really a, a fostering a lot of innovation and a lot of new companies. So in proportion to Israel's size, uh, it, there is kind of an unproportional uh, yeah, yeah. number of, of cybersecurity startups that are uh, coming out of that incubator, basically. In incubator. Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating the amount of founders that do come out or like veteran founders. So, um, no, it's an interesting transition for sure. So leaving the military, you then founded, was it Light Cyber, your first venture? 
Uh, yeah, the, the first cyber venture. I had a, another one before that where I tried my my luck in in, in non cybersecurity realms, uh, actually in the world of advertising. Uh, okay. That one didn't work out. Uh, but so the second startup, uh, I came back uh, to my roots, uh, uh, kind of my expertise, uh, if you may, uh, um, and kind of founded the Light Server uh, back in 2011. It's hard hard to believe, you know, in looking now, but back then uh, it was the notion was more or less that security is a solved problem. Uh, uh, so basically, you know, all you need is a firewall and, and maybe an antivirus and you'll be OK. And, and more or less at that time. Uh, uh, if you maybe remember, there was a huge breach to Lockheed Martin, uh, the largest security contractor for the U.S. government. Uh, and to enable that breach, uh, the, the hackers actually uh, first breached into RSA security. So the one of the largest security providers and one of the largest uh, government contractors all breached. Uh, so basically, the, the issue was looking left and right and saying, well, if they, they were breached successfully, uh, we are probably at risk as well. And that started a whole new wave of um, advanced attacks uh, and uh, um, hundreds and hundreds of new cybersecurity startups that uh, started uh, in that, uh, that new wave um, that was started. Nice, and nice. Awesome. So with, with Light Cyber being your first cyber venture, how big did you get that in the end from, so it was five years? You, you... Yeah, well, we uh, we exited to Palo Alto Networks in 2017. Uh, we were roughly 50 people by that time, uh, in, and really identified an opportunity uh, to take the product to the next level. Uh, you know, no, not only in, in, in of course, leveraging Palo Alto's uh, you know substantial firepower, if you may, in, in terms of bringing products to market, but they uh, and and what's really exciting for me is that they really had a vision of how to take the product. To the next level, to really, uh, in, in some way, uh, materialize it, its uh, its a promise. All right, so we we took a product that was on prem and made it into a cloud SaaS delivered uh, product. Uh, we mm -hmm. leveraged uh, the wide array of, of Palo Alto Networks products as sensors to collect telemetry that could be analyzed with the advanced analytics that we built in Light Cyber. Uh, so really, uh, you know, not just uh, you know. Um, Kind of a change of hands, but really uh, an opportunity to to take it forward. And and actually, just yesterday, uh, I've seen a post by uh, my former boss, Dergan and Fink, uh, who who mentioned that they just reached a milestone of one billion dollars in sales of of that uh, that the evolution of that product that is known today as Cortex XDR. Uh, yeah. That uh, which is basically at the core of the technology from Light Cyber. So it's an amazing milestone. I'm super happy that that is living on it's continuing to grow continuing to evolve um uh, and um and you know that's kind of a double success not just you know the the exit of the company but actually yeah you know, amazing did you um when you exit obviously look, I, I did look online and saw some big numbers of what the acquisition was why, why didn't you just retire <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, first of all, the first phase was to make sure that the acquisition is successful. So uh, I wanted to not only kind of hand it off and let it die or burn or whatever. Uh, so the first goal was to make it a successful acquisition. But after that, you know what what I enjoy doing is is building companies, bringing innovation to to the market. Uh, that's what I love doing, and and so it was very natural for me to just get back to square one. Uh, and leave uh, when I decided to leave Palo Alto and really the next day found my next startup start from uh, scratch uh, all over again yeah uh, and build a new company with a new product uh, to market awesome so Palo Alto you was there three years was that part of sort of the deal did you have to stay for that long or was it just because you wanted to see a successful transition it was uh, I think it was both uh, nice. there was both an incentive to stay nice uh, so um again yeah. completing that that process uh, for me kind of bringing it to closure in some sense or love that, that. yeah love good, that good, uh, continued on uh and which which you did yeah great cool let's dive straight in on cardinal ops then talk to me about <laughs> this business where did the name come from the branding's great like yeah tell me more uh yeah so um i um i think uh, uh the the brand is something that 
uh, is really something I, you know, I personally cared about, you know, having uh, something that resonates. Uh, so I put a lot of thought into it. It's actually, uh, you know, by now, uh, you know, uh, and, and funnily enough, while I was thinking about, you know, the interview we're going to have, I remembered a 17th reason, oh. for the, <laughs> which I forgot, which was one of the first uh, reasons uh, uh, for the logo. Uh, and, and, and so by now there's kind of a slew of of uh, the ones I can mention, just a few examples, right? So it started from looking for something like a bird's eye view, looking at the big, big picture, uh, not just the day-to-day -day, uh, security operations, but trying to see the big picture and what needs to be done to to make a big dramatic change. And and then uh, kind of um, where I landed on uh, the Carmel bird, which of course has uh, uh, the meaning of card, card something cardinal, which is of importance, something central. Uh, and that the, that combination of something important and having the bird's eye view was was kind of the initial trigger. From there, it just kept on going. Where we kind of uh, you know, for example, when we built the, the logo uh, and, and um, you know having uh, of course the C letter, which is you know that yeah. and part of the logo, but com com combined with the bird and looking to the right, which is the direction of progress and future and, and improvement. Um, so these are just you know just a few, and there I can go on yeah. and on. For, for an hour just talking about the different aspects of the logo but uh we're we're really we're, uh, yeah so no that's under. great no it's really interesting how much thought and effort has gone into it because i know that so many businesses do launch where they just sort of write here's the name let's just do like a, a little logo and then right let's go so no it's, it's really interesting to know that you ne you do have 17 reasons as to where the name <laughs> and the branding sort of come in but it looks great so Great. Um, By the way, so, cool fact, uh, just to mention one more thing is that sometimes just with the low, the, the background, it's such a lovable word in the in the United States that some people tell me you just made my day just by coming online with a background. Uh, it, it, they it just brings to them such uh, kind of good thoughts and yeah, 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 absolutely, no, definitely. So what you three years in now? Um, obviously founded was it March February of twenty twenty? So when COVID was just. <laughs> just taking off like how how was that how was raising during that period it's like yeah it was it's a pretty cr crazy crazy time to start a company i think back then we didn't realize to the full extent what what is going to happen um i'm personally an optimist in nature so i was assuming this will all go away in a couple of months um uh, but of course that uh, uh, you know i was telling my for example our investors uh, uh, both of them, by the way, prior investors in Light Cyber that immediately wanted to join kind of the ride and, 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 and kind of support us on, on the next venture. Uh, I was telling them, yeah, of course, I'm going to be on flights half of my time going to meet customers. That's kind of that's the way to do business in a global business and go and meet customers. Um, kind of how little did I know where I'm going to be stuck at home for months uh, uh, with a family <laughs> and, and doing everything remotely with Zoom. And uh, so things that uh, definitely... Uh, we're not uh, as we imagined them to be, but um, but I think uh, you know humanity finds a way. So uh, you know new ways to collaborate, new ways to meet customers. Uh, uh, find ourselves uh, jumping from back to back zooms with people around the world, where otherwise you know, you would have had to travel for days on end, from you know from plane to plane, from hotel to hotel, just to attend those meetings and get to those meeting rooms. And now you could have. Uh, five, six uh, meetings the same day all across the world uh, without you know, you know, getting up from your chair. So yeah. that is, uh, so it was not only the, you know, new challenges, but also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Opportunity come with it. Yeah, for sure. How about building, like scaling the business during COVID? Because so with Light Cyber, you got to 50 people, you would have been able to interview like in the office and uh, be able to go off site, like you say. How was that like hiring for the first time remotely or was your remote business before? Like that's a, that's an interesting position itself. Yeah, I think uh, really came hand in hand. So so when we were hiring our first uh, U.S. employees uh, across the seas, we were definitely doing it 100 uh, percent remote. Um, so it affected, I think, two things. One of them in, in the question of do we uh, build a headquarters in the U.S., right, a central place where we're trying to build, bring everyone to the same place, hiring only in, a, in one certain hub uh, versus the uh, alternative of, of really embracing the fully remote uh, new culture and then being uh, open to, to hire talent across the entire United States, which, which really opened up the opportunities. 
So um, in, in that decision, we, we went with the latter. We decided to optimize on talent. And I think that not only uh, increased the, the quality of the people we could bring, uh, but also the pace in which we can find them and, and, and hire them. Um, so that was, um, I think, a really an opportunity is we found ourselves hiring people who we've never met face to face. We we only met them a year later, maybe after things started to ease off. Uh, yeah. So that that was funny, you know. That our, uh, but um, uh, but but uh, it turned out uh, very well, and and I think that's another example of a, of uh, of a, maybe a challenge that turned into an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I always find it really interesting when I meet somebody that I've only met on Zoom before, like either how tall or how small they are in comparison <laughs> to me. Uh, yeah. everyone looks the same size sat down but uh great so obviously running uh cardinal ops so second or third venture technically but second cyber big question but what were some of the the lessons that you've learned from light cyber that you think we took this and learned from that and then put it into cardinal ops what sort of one or two points might you be able to think of with that yeah um so uh, i think what the one uh, good example is is that of really going out there to 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 um, meet customers and, and share the technology from day one, basically, right? We, whereas it may be light cyber, we were in the garage for a year and a half before we were actually out there uh, showing, uh, you know, the product to, to customers. Here, we started, built, the first thing we did is build the UI, right? That that was, it had nothing behind it, uh, where, you know, showing these mockups, telling the story of what value they're going to get, getting the feedback and, and starting to iterate on the value proposition from day one uh, mm -hmm. based on customer feedback was something very, very powerful that, that kind of came uh, from from that, that experience we've accumulated in, uh, in Light Cyber. And, and uh, I feel it, it brought us much faster to market. And, and in general, when we were uh, basically building car ops, I think the fact that we brought that prior uh, experience uh, from, uh, from Light Cyber allowed us to set higher bars and shorter uh, um, objective kind of the, the, the timeline, everything got compressed. We had to, you know, do more and faster and, and have set a higher bar, run faster and, and kind of, um, so it didn't become easier, right? Because <laughs> you do the same thing over, you know, just with the experiments. So to make it easier, we just uh, raise the bar. So, so yeah. it's, Kind of maintain the how hard things are, uh, how how eff how much effort is required to uh, to to be to to reach those goals. Uh, but it you know keeps things uh, exciting and interesting and challenging. And that's kind of the things we we love doing. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And also, you're creating a uh, a new category, right, with with Cardinal Ops. Yeah, that's actually true for both uh, Light Cyber back in the day. Okay, so with Cardinal, uh, we are kind of bringing a new category to market. Uh, so not only, you know, with the normal challenges of building a company with everything involved, but also uh, the aspects of evangelizing a, a new idea, you know, where we typically come into the room, uh, the person we're the CISO, the, you know, the security uh, leader that we're talking to has never heard of a, of a solution like ours. Uh, they uh, are not, uh, we're not aware that the technology can be leveraged to solve these types of problems. Uh, so we are... In, in essence, uh, both uh, presenting a company, but also a concept and an, yeah. think of it as an alternative future, right? Things can be much better. Uh, things can be different. This is how you, uh, you know, you shift from things you've done in a certain way until today. And here is a new revolutionary technology that can really uh, yeah. trans transform that and, and bring you to a completely different outcome. Yeah, got it, got it. What's next for, for Cardinal Ops? What, what, where are we taking this? Another acquisition are we going for? Uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking long term in general. We're not, uh, you know, we're in, 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 in actually in two, two different senses of the word. One of them is to enjoy the ride, right? We're not trying to say, okay, let's, you know, you know, let's sacrifice everything for the short term because, you know, we'll somehow do a quick, um, you know, yeah. exit and get rid of it. Uh, we're we're actually the complete opposite. We're saying we need to think of this as a long term, a uh, 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 long journey where we're building actual value for our customers, uh, building a real company that is sustainable, um, and 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 enjoying the ride. Well, so we don't kind of 
burn the bridges while we do it and, and kind of burn out ourselves. So so we're thinking about this long term. And, and I think in terms of uh, the, the vision that, that CarOps is, was founded on, on really kind of um, you know, bringing automation for the first time to the entire world of security engineering uh, is, is, is really a, a blue ocean for us to, to go after. And, and we're, we're not capped in any way in how big we can grow. It's up to us to continue and execute, continue to innovate and continue to build a, a big company. Uh, so we are you know, looking forward to, to take it as uh, uh, forward and, and, and build a substantial company in the security space. Look, I know you don't need it, but good luck. Absolute pleasure having you on, Michael, and I'll uh, I'll catch up with you in Tel Aviv next month.